Hi everybody, Dan again. I uh, wanted to do a follow-up to my last video on the Power SSR tail with another uh, project that I've been working on. Um, as you can see here, we have a couple of bits attached to a circuit board. Uh, this one right here is a, a DS18B20 uh, one-wire temperature sensor. Uh, so is that one. What we're going to do is uh, use some uh, temperature monitoring and uh, PID control to uh, using the power SSR tail control a heating element uh, to maintain a specific temperature within a temperature vessel. And right here we have a photoresistor that we're going to use for some feedback uh, on the SSR tail. This LED right here, we're going to monitor that to make sure that when the Raspberry Pi tells the power SSR tail to turn on, that it does actually turn on, get some feedback into the system for safety purposes, of course. As you can see here, everything is all soldered to a, a, a proto board. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty, but uh, it does work. Uh, electrically, it, it works at least. There's no short circuits. Uh, I have tested it once before. And on the bottom of that proto board are a couple of headers, and as you can see, they just fit right on top of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, for easy installation and removal in case I need to modify that circuit. Here is fermenting. We'll find out in about six weeks if I got the sanitation stuff right. Uh, fingers crossed. The um, lights are ready to go. The temperature probe is tape to the side of the keg. Uh, in my test that seemed to work out pretty well. There's um, some you know duct tape on it to insulate the temperature probe from the ambient internal temperature of the cooler and um, a little bit of tin foil to increase conductivity uh, uh, from the side of the wall of the keg to the temperature sensor. So it should work out pretty well. Um, there's all the stuff over there. Um, I think that's about it. So, oh, one other thing I'll show you here in a second. Um, I don't want to have the lights shining right on the keg the whole two weeks. So uh, we'll mitigate that uh, somehow. All right, so uh, we'll see how well you can see this, but um, there's basically two pieces of uh, parchment paper that are folded up to shield the keg from the blinding lights, which I don't actually think will be a problem. I don't think I really need to do that, but. You know, they say keep it out of direct light, which I'm pretty sure they're talking about sunlight, which means UV light, um, which from these I don't think will be an issue. But anyway, um, I use parchment paper. Um, it, these w lights only put out about 11 watts of power, really not that much to be concerned with. But um, the parchment paper, of course, is rated for, you know, high temperature. It's for use in an oven for baking. Uh, so we got that. Um, and it's not tightly packed. I didn't want to influence the uh, air circulation too much and I don't know because if it's one thing I know about it's uh, thermodynamics right <laughs> yeah no so we'll see what happens um, but on the topic of safety let's take a look at that um, so these are UL listed fused lights uh, for one there's not that many of them like I said only 11 watts it should be enough for a cooler this size um, the control is done using the power SSR tail, which you saw in a previous video. Uh, that basically decouples the uh, uh, logic from the microcontroller uh, and the AC power control. Uh, so we got that. That's good. Um, there's monitoring uh, going back from the uh, on LED on the power SSR tail going back to the Raspberry Pi just for some feedback to make sure that when it's on, it's is actually on and then when it's supposed to turn off it does actually turn off and then of course um, yeah that looks safe but nah. setting that aside everything is plugged into a uh, GCFI uh, outlet or is it GFCI? I always get those two mixed up. What is it? Oh, can't focus on what it says. Uh, GFCI. Okay so that was right. Was I? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, um, so we got that. Uh, and of course, all this is monitored constantly. Um, you know, if it gets too hot, there's an alert that's sent out. So should be good to go. 
Um, but yeah, like I said, in six weeks time, <laughs> maybe we'll find out if it actually worked. So here's hoping. And here's what it will actually look like for those six weeks. Um, well, actually, no, fermenting is only two weeks. Uh, but so we have uh, going into the uh, into the um, container, the cooler. We have uh, the internal ambient temperature sensor, which measures the ambient air inside the cooler. The one on the top, this guy right here, is uh, just for ambient external air temperature, just to keep track of that. And uh, there's one other line, I think this line right here, this gray telephone line, um, that one is actually going around into the cooler and that's the one that's taped to the side of the keg um, to get as close to a uh, liquid temperature as, as we can. So I uh, think that'll work and we'll, I'm going to go play with the software here in a bit and set the set point and uh, we'll be good to go. All right. So you see before you the uh, software that I'm using for this project. It's called Raspi Brew and uh, I'll provide a link down below for uh, more information. And this is something I found. I didn't, I didn't write this, but as you can see, it is built for exactly this purpose, um, for brewing and fermenting and that sort of thing. It uh, employs PID control, and there are a number of sensors attached to it. Uh, vessel 1 up there on the top is the internal ambient air temperature sensor, and that is the one that is actually uh, hooked up to the PID control loop. Um, so based on the temperature readings from that sensor, uh, the Christmas lights on the inside of the cooler will be turned on and off to regulate and keep a constant air temperature inside the cooler. Um, I think the second sensor down uh, here labeled vessel 2 is the, um, the sensor that's taped to the side of the keg, uh, so we're going to consider that to be the liquid temperature, more just for monitoring at this point. And the uh, vessel 3 on the bottom, also just for monitoring, is the, um, the external ambient air sensor, just to get an idea of the temperature of the air outside of the cooler in, in my bathroom. So. Um, I like the software. Uh, it, it seems to work pretty well once I uh, configured it and I did customize it to... Uh, there's some email alerts that will be sent if the uh, LED sensor on the SSR tail doesn't uh, detect that when the heater is supposed to turn off, it actually turns off. So um, there's a couple modifications made to it. It's all in Python, so it's relatively straightforward. But um, yeah, uh, I, I like it. The PID settings that it defaulted to are pretty much the ones that I'm using now, and it seems to work uh, pretty well. So that was nice. I didn't have to do a whole bunch of uh, tuning for it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's, I've set it once, and uh, it's been running for um, about a little over a week now. One last parting thought, I'm sending all the temperature data up to a service called UbiDots. It works kind of like a data.sparkfun.com where you send it data periodically and then it collects it and puts it into a nice pretty graphical format. On the top graph I have the external and or the excuse me the internal ambient air temperature and the water uh, temperature and as you can see it works uh, pretty well um, over a period of uh, more than a day it's it's pretty rock solid around the set point of 72.5 maybe plus or minus half a degree and considering it's controlling a, a volume of air uh, that's perfectly fine the, as you can see the water uh, temperature fluctuation is, is almost non-existent so that's good the uh, external ambient uh, air temperature on the bottom uh, I would expect that to go all over the place since uh, you know, it's greatly affected by the uh, outdoor temperature and what I have my thermostat set to and all that kind of stuff. So uh, overall, I am very happy with how the uh, temperature control has gone on this project so far. And uh, like I said, in a couple of weeks, we'll see if the beer's any good. Um, fingers crossed. Thanks very much for watching, and be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay informed of any updates on this or any other project we might be working on. So long for now.